Hi everyone, it's Josh with Talk About Trek, and I'm back tonight with something a little bit different uh, than the normal just sitting and ranting about a book for 20 to 30 minutes. We are going to talk about the latest line of Star Trek comic books that have come about. And we're not going to go too in-depth because I have not read any of them. But what I do have here next to me is a fairly thick pile of Trek comics that have all come out within maybe the past, I would say, six or seven months. So as you can see, quite a bit going on in the world of Star Trek comics there. So I thought it would be fun to do something a little bit different. And uh, you'll probably be seeing a lot more of this, you know, kind of coming up on this channel. I've decided I do want to do more because what's funner than talking about Trek stuff? And there's so much good Trek stuff to talk about. So in the future, you know, more stuff about comic books, more stuff about toys. My son has been on me to make another toy video because he insists that that is what, that is what the people are looking for, is the, the Star Trek toy videos. But, uh, I mean, what the heck? Maybe that's what the world needs right now, is more Star Trek toy videos. And definitely more Star Trek comic videos. So... I mean, there are Star Trek comics going back since the beginning of the, the show, you know, since the 1960s. I have quite a few, maybe a, a fairly good stack of kind of old TOS stuff like that. Uh, the main thing that I focused on for a while was the TNG run, and I have the whole uh, 1 through 80 of the TNG run which I dutifully collected, and then never read. So that's something that needs to be remedied. But today and for the immediate future, we're going to focus on what uh, IDW, the publisher, is putting out now. So let's have a look. So here we are. We've got our the first one, which I have talked about before a few months ago when it was out, is the Lower Decks comic line, which I have read all of this one. And it just, I mean, it's just so much fun because it's like straight from the show. You know, the art and the show match together so well. So this was good, but I unfortunately only ended up getting the very first one. And I think there's two more that I'm going to need to pick up off of eBay or, or something like that. But I definitely want to follow up on those. There was a series on Picard where it basically kind of bridges the gap between uh, Picard Season 2 and Picard Season 3, kind of following up on an adventure, dipping into a little bit of his past. Uh, I haven't read the full three issues yet. I think maybe I got like one and a half in. But I liked what I read so far. Uh, the art was, I don't know, maybe not my favorite, but it did have seven in it. And I am a big fan of seven. So anything that throws seven in there... It's going to get an extra thumbs up for me. See, there she is right there. So so we'll get into that one. And basically the plan here is I want to kind of show you what the Trek books that are out now are for comics. And then hopefully over the next couple of days, I'll have some extra time. Uh, this is actually my birthday weekend. So on my birthday weekend in our family, we kind of we can afford a little bit extra time for the, the fun stuff that you want to do. And one of the things I'm going to hopefully do this weekend is pick up these Trek comics and spend a little bit of time reading through those. So that's Stargazer 2. Look at that. That's kind of a cool cover there for Stargazer 3. Picard and 7 and then some mysterious vampire lady. I don't know. But we're going to find out, and we'll definitely get into that. Oh, okay, now here... I have read the first issue of this, and this is the kind of like the main Star Trek line that they're they're pushing right now. As you can see, it's just called Star Trek, and they are attempting to kind of, kind of, kind of what? No, kind of uh, bring together multi generations of fans, I guess, in this one because they've got Cisco leading the way. Uh, Data is part of the crew. Dr. Crusher is here. And they even have, which I really liked, and we'll kind of get into this one a little bit here, the engineer there on the... Where is he? Ah, here he is. Okay. 
it's Mr. Scott. So, again, I've read just the first one, and uh, they seem to be telling a pretty interesting story here, so I am excited to see where this goes. So, we'll definitely kind of dive right in and then just go through them all at once. But let's have a little bit of a preview and look at the covers here. So, I do like the cover for this one, though. And it looks like in number two, we get a little bit of Klingon action. And then, this is pretty nice. Look at this Q here. So something happened with Q. And then that's the, the hero ship, I guess, of this is the USS Theseus. So there's Q. Something menacing going on there with Q. And then finally, issue four, and I think maybe... Maybe issue five is out now, or it's the one coming out next. I don't think I'm too far behind on any of these. But there's the Theseus being pursued by, it looks like, a bird of prey there. So so that's Star Trek, like basically their, their main comic that they're pushing now. And uh, I'm excited to kind of jump into that and see what that one's all about. Now, this one looks pretty interesting as well. So we've got our Strange New Worlds comic. And I wasn't even... Uh, I told our local comic book store basically anything Star Trek kind of signed me up for and put it on my list of things to bring in. And I didn't even realize that this was out already and that I was so far behind because I basically had uh, all three issues ready to pick up when I went to the store there. So... What we have here is Strange New Worlds, the Illyrian Enigma. And just briefly, I kind of look at it, and it does seem to pick up after the season. And they are kind of following up on what happened at the end of the season finale there. And I won't go into it too much, but I really enjoyed Strange New Worlds um, If I would have to say, it probably is my favorite new Trek show out of everything. Now, Picard Season 3 could change that. Hold on, let's go back here. Picard Season 3 could change that. But out of all the new Trek shows, Discovery, Lower Decks, Prodigy, Picard, Strange New Worlds, for me, I think, is the most Trekky Trek show that there is out there. So, I'm excited to read more about this. There is a book called The High Country that just recently came out, and as I said, it's my birthday weekend, and I'm hoping maybe that might be one of my birthday presents. So uh, just excited to kind of learn more about this crew, get in more to these stories here that they're telling. So uh, we have three episodes of the Strange New Worlds comic that we can get into this weekend and see a little bit more. And... So far, what I've seen about the art, we'll kind of briefly look. I mean, it looks pretty good. So I'm intrigued to see what they're going to show us here in these. Now, the last one here that we're going to talk about is the one that I think I'm kind of... I'm most excited for because I'm excited to see... <laughs> what it's going to end up with. And now we're talking about Star Trek Resurgence. Oh, and not Kirk's Spock and Bones. Straighten up, guys. Okay. So, Star Trek Resurgence. And the one thing I can tell you that I don't like about this comic is that on each one of them, they do announce very loudly that this is the prequel to the Star Trek Resurgence video game. So there is a, a video game coming out Sometime. We don't exactly know when. I think they originally wanted to put it out this spring, and then maybe it's been delayed. And hopefully by the time I read this comic, we'll have a little bit more information about when that's coming out. But it looks to be a really interesting game. Kind of one of those, like those storytelling games, maybe not a whole ton of action. But for a Star Trek game, I think that is a good way to go. So I'm excited to play that. And I was actually thinking that that would be a fun thing to try and actually stream upon release. So I'm going to try to set that up where I can have my Twitch thing going and just do a, a stream of that game and maybe set it up to be like a, you know, 
do it every couple of a couple of nights a week or something and just play through that live on a stream and then you know that would be fun but what we have here is the comic book prequel to that so i'm looking forward to getting into that and we have four episodes we have four episodes here guys these are four episodes of a thing we have four issues and I have not looked into these at all. I just kind of briefly paged through the first one. And I did see that it does have Dr. Leah Brahms, who was a, a guest star in a couple of TNG episodes in it. But I'm guessing that our heroes are the, the featured characters there that maybe are the ones that will be playing as the video game characters. So let's look at the four covers here for our Star Trek Resurgence comic. We got a kind of a crafty old guy there with a shifty mustache. Some kind of burnt up zombie character, maybe. Issue two. Trapped in a crystal, being crushed. Okay. Three. Oh, things are not looking good for this commander here. Who's under a bunch of guns here and got a little bit of a nosebleed and then issue four looks like it features dr leah brahms that's kind of a cool cover i like that but anyway those are all of the oh, look at some of this Those are the new line of Star Trek comics that are available right now for you to go out there and check out. But if you don't want to check them out, you can tune back in later on this weekend or early into next week, probably this weekend, and we will sit down and kind of talk about what each of these books is about and you know where it's taken these stories. Uh, for me, like I said, it's always so hard to say, but I'm interested in the Resurgence comics because I really want to get into that game. And I hope that the game is good, and I hope that I can stream it and have fun streaming it, and, and that could be a thing that would be fun. More Strange New Worlds is always a good thing, so excited to jump into that. And I wonder if it's going to tie into the show. Um, and it seems like maybe it's having something to do with number one. So maybe it will tie into that story somewhat. So now this, this just kind of seems like off the rails. Uh, but it should be fun. You know, like, look, they brought Cisco, Crusher, Data. They're throwing in old Scotty. They've got Q coming in. Uh, so they're doing something big there. And it should be fun to read. And it'll be nice to get the follow-up story here, just to maybe give us me, give us a little bit more seven as we venture on into Picard season three. And um, my hopes, I guess, my hopes and dreams are. Uh, and now I guess we'll just take a little bit of time to rant Star Trek uh, for a little bit, but. With the recent news of Discovery, uh, season five being their final season, it makes you wonder where their plans for the future are. And for a while, they were going pretty big. I mean, they had so many shows in production all at once, and now that's going to kind of come to a close. And it makes you, I guess, wonder what's what's going to be next. And I am hoping that Picard season three will be successful enough, will be good enough, that it will drive a basically the next show to continue right along in that era. And it should be led by Seven. I want the Captain Seven show. Alright. I want the Captain Seven show. I would take the Captain Riker show, I mean obviously. But the show that I think that they're going to make and that they should make would be the Captain Seven show. So uh, Captain Seven, imagine this like a Captain Seven show, 
but then they're drawing in characters from Voyager, characters from DS9, characters from TNG, characters from Prodigy, characters from Lower Decks even. All of this could happen in this next show. And I think it's what a lot of people have kind of been waiting to see. I will say that my kind of main gripe about Picard season one and two was it wasn't enough like in space. So that's, I think the direction that they need to go. So uh, speaking of things to come forward in the future and uh, speaking of Star Trek prodigy, just want to show a couple of other things off here. I did order two kids books which I am going to jump into at some point uh, because I was just interested in getting more Star Trek Prodigy media. And actually, I do like reading uh, the young adult books. They make a nice little break. They're like an easy little uh, thing to dive into. And you can surprisingly find a lot of really good stories in those. So going to be jumping into those sometime. Currently am about that far into this chewed up copy of the empty chair that I received uh, but I think I did most of the chewing myself but this is very good this is what I wanted it jumped right back into the action and I'm just pumped to see how this is going to end up so that's coming in the future too so lots of fun things coming down the pipeline again I want to talk more about comics magazines toys games maybe do some streaming, just try to have some more fun talking about Trek, because that's what I like to do. So, uh, as always, I want to thank everyone for staying here and watching with me, watching with me, listening to me as I rant about Star Trek and Star Trek-related things, and uh, join me later on this weekend for a deeper dive into what these Trek comics are bringing to the table. So, uh, thanks again. Live, live long and prosper. And we'll see you guys later. Bye.